In this episode of BEA Conversations on Mental Fitness to Leadership, we're speaking with uh, Ronalyn, co-founder of Think Event, based in Malaysia. And um, uh, Ronald and his team are unfortunately in a uh, less than 24 hours notice of lockdown uh, by the government and, uh, and learning lots of things and managing lots of things and everything that we talked about uh, over the past few months of being uh, agile and nimble, uh, they have been put to the test. Uh, this particular week. Ronald, thank you so much for joining us. How are you doing? Thank you for having me. How are you? I'm really, really good. Now, today we are um, uh, talking about aligning expectations. So tell us a little bit about what have you learned about expectations over the past few months? Um, everyone has a, their own expectations, whether it's in projects in ourselves or in, in, in our client, our team. But what I've learned the most is actually besides aligning our expectation we need to learn how to balance our expectations mm. i think that's very crucial because especially in, in our industry right now we are learning new things every day everyone is so new to the whole virtual world right so i think the expectations here we need to learn how to really uh, balance it and keep it realistic yeah. So how do you balance expectations and why is it important to you? Um, the way we find that, I think that's the only way to, to really balance a, an expectation is through conversations. Very authentic, very truthful conversations. Um, we cannot be too shy or high say, you know, in, in our Asian term, to, to say no or even to highlight that no, that's not a good idea. We need to really have that conversation and to understand what is the core expectation that is more important. Sometimes we can have a whole list of tens or hundreds of expectations, but what is really important for that particular project? Mm. I think we need to, to be able to identify. Um, and for example, if, if content and the speaker is more important for, for an event, then we should focus more on how we can actually deliver the content, the message flawlessly. Um, rather than having too much bells and whistles that it's not important. So you need to really identify which expectation is actually more crucial and what is our priority. So through conversations, I, I think truthful and honest conversations with, with the other party, whether it's your client, whether it's your team, um, whether it's your supplier, I think that's very crucial. And this should start from the way beginning of the project. It shouldn't be, you know, halfway through, you have already signed the deal, and then, oh, by the way, we have this expectation that we need you to do. Yeah. Is it realistic given that now um, a lot of projects are, has been, have been assigned at the very last minute? So how much time would you spend or would you suggest or would you actually personally allocate to understand their priorities uh, in terms of your, your own and your customers? And how much time do you allocate to aligning that, um, those expectations? Um, now we even get inquiry or even get appointed for, for, for a virtual event in as short as two weeks to three weeks time. How much time do we spend? I think things should run in parallel. Um, understanding the scope, getting the brief, that that is key. And I think we, we spend 20% of our time trying to align or trying to balance the expectations. And then we, we will then have to spend time as well to um, find ways to fulfill certain expectations that we may not be sure of. Because a lot of testing has to be done. We have to, um, there's a lot of trial and error. So we need to, to test the system. We need to test the whole logic. Um, a lot of things that we need to find out before we, we can tell the other party whether that expectation can be met or not. Mm. So, mm. When it comes to building towards uh, being mentally fit mm. and in the, er in the area of uh, uh, aligning expectations, what are some of the pitfalls well, when it comes to unrealistic expectations? I think the inability to accept that we can't be 100% perfect. I think that that's, that's something that um, I'm still learning. I'm still learning to accept that I can't, um, I can't fulfill 100% of my clients' uh, requests or expectations. Because in the past, when we do live events, we will do our very best and a lot of things are within our control. But now in the virtual world, a simple thing as the internet can just screw up the entire event, mm. yeah. Is there one thing that you consciously, um, I guess, uh, practice to maintain that 
um, balance, the mental balance when, when you fall short of expectations. Staff reminder. I remind my team um, and also I will need to remind myself mm -hmm. because sometimes I'll see that my team get really upset when they, they feel that they did not deliver to the fullest. Yeah. And I think that affects me as well. If I see that they're building themselves up, me as their leader, I, I feel that I, I didn't do uh, enough. So it's a constant reminder, not just for myself, but also for, 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 for the team that I work with. Mm -hmm. And for many, for many organizations and agencies like yourself and the one that you own, um, catching the next revenue opportunity is paramount, right? Because we are all trying to manage cash flow and everything. So how often do you um, switch off to make sure that you have enough time to catch a breath or catch a thought process as you reflect on uh, some of the uh, uh, expectation realignment? Um. Something that I just started recently is to switch off after 8 p.m. So I won't, I won't uh, look at my email unless that I'm on a on a real timeline where I have to fulfill certain uh, timeline, right, or deadline. But other than that, weekends I will try not to come back to the office. Um, I will not bring my laptop home. <laughs> yeah, that sort of stuff. Yeah, that that is a that is a great um, uh, exercise that you're 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 doing for yourself. And uh, and what what have you learned since you've done that in terms of switching off after eight or you know trying not to touch emails over the weekend? Uh, will you is your ex will your service expectation of your company brand go? Oh my God, are we not servicing our customers? Are we being less available? Uh, were there any uh, detriment to, to to your brand? Actually, no. So prior to doing that, that was my worry. You know, oh no, what what will my client think of us? Are we getting snobbish or lancy now that you know we we have our own personal time? But then I come to realize that we deserve personal time. You know, we, we can't be twenty four hours on call, and we we need to learn how to explain that to the client. So what we did was um, we will actually tell the client that um, if they email us a request at six forty five or seven pm on a Friday evening for a change of visuals or stuff like that, then I will just reply and say that our team has gone off for the weekend. Please send your email on all the changes that you require. We will look into it first thing on Monday morning. And so what was their response? And they actually responded well. I said, oh, yeah, noted. Sometimes they just need to get um, the task on their to-do list, get struck off, they just have to send it out. But they, they don't really expect you to, to work after hours. But it's just our own assumption that we need to get it done now and you know that that this very minute yeah yeah that that is a brilliant example i think coming back to your point open com open conversations open communication uh aligning the mindset and expectations with customers uh especially whoever that is paying paying us to do a job at the moment is so important because if not we can fall into bad ha bad habits or assumptions um that yeah. uh, that create a lot of unnecessary worrying and, and, yeah. and work that we may not need yeah, we, we can't we can assume that the client or the other party or even the vendor understand what we want. So that uh, 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 an honest conversation has to go on. Totally. And uh, so knowing what you know now, what would, you, what would what advice would you have given Ronald 10 years ago um, when it comes to aligning expectations? If I were to tell myself 10 years ago, we can't win on the time. Mm. And we need to learn to accept that we can't fulfill 100% of the expectation all the time. Um, that doesn't make us a bad person or a bad event company. We simply just don't have the answer for everything. Yeah. You are and having that honest right. conversation is important. Yeah, you are absolutely right. I think we can't win it all. I think most importantly, we have to win it for ourselves and to make sure that uh, we are good to ourselves. We are realistic, being realistic. Uh, to ourselves um, and uh, because when we are fully motivated and uh, happy with what we are doing I think it produces results naturally yeah well thank, thank you Ronald please uh, take care and reach out uh, if there's anything that we can do outside the lockout zone do let us know and uh, our sincere regards to you and your family thank you take see care. you bye